Let's take a look at the conceptual modeling workflow in VModFlex. You start by loading your raw data. This one shown here is from the demo project. You can import georeference images, borehole logs, XYZ points, and these can be shown in 2D or 3D. In the data tree in the top left there, you can see all your raw data that you can turn on and off in different 2D or 3D viewers. And now here we're showing some different cross-sections that have been imported from HydroGeoAnalyst. Interpreted points from the cross-sections can be exported XYZ data, and then you can interpolate those to create surfaces. Here are some corresponding GIS data, including surface water bodies, shape files showing some geology, the conceptual model boundary, roads, rivers, property boundaries, etc. And these can be shown in 2D or 3D. Now we're turning on the different surfaces that represent the tops and bottoms for the geological layers. Here is a ground surface, and then we have different surfaces for fill, sand, clay, etc. As you can see, in the conceptual model, the surfaces don't need to be continuous across the entire domain. They can have whatever geometry they want to. The surfaces will form the foundation for the conceptual model. You'll see in the top right there, you have your navigational tools for the 3D viewer, including zooming, pan, rotate, etc. So after you have your surfaces and your conceptual model boundary, you can define horizons. The horizons allow you to accommodate pinch outs, discontinuities, etc. using the different horizon rules that are shown on the screen now. The main horizon types are erosional, base, discontinuous, and conformable, and these allow you to uh, truncate her surfaces above or below based on the rule that you define. The corresponding structural zones and horizons are added to the tree in the conceptual model on the bottom left, and this is shown now. And these can be shown in 2D or 3D as well. In between the horizons, you have a set of structural zones that are generated, and these form the foundation for the geological model. For these, you'll add properties, including connectivity, heads, etc and these also can be shown in 2D or 3D. Next, you can define the property zones and you use these uh, structural zones as geometry input for the property zones. And properties can be defined using GIS data, surfaces, shape file attributes, etc. Lastly, you define your boundary conditions, and these include your standard river, constant head, drain, etc., but also include pumping wells and more advanced stream or surface water networks. Boundary conditions can be defined include using uh, surface data, shape file attributes, etc. This concludes the conceptual modeling workflow. In the next movie, we'll take a look at converting a conceptual model to one or more numerical grids and corresponding numerical models. Thanks for watching.